I'm so excited about today's project. We're making nativity boards. I'm Mandy with Sugar Bee Crafts and I'm gonna walk you through how to make a nativity board step by step. I can't get over how awesome these came out. These ones are for me because I love turquoise, but you can also make them in black or white. Um, personalize them however you want. And as you can see, you've got two options. Paint the background or paint the people. Paint the background, paint the people. One of the first things you're gonna to need to decide is about your design. I love this one with the background painted. It's probably my favorite. And the people are stained gray. But there are so many other options. So I've got some more to show you over here. This one, I left the wood natural. You see it? And then painted the background white. So that came out really cool. This one, I stained the board chestnut and painted the background white distressed like I didn't fill it all in. This one is also chestnut, but opposite. Painting the people, not the background. So that's the hardest part of this project. It's deciding which version you're gonna make. Once you know, we're gonna jump right into the how-to steps. So about making these today. So, let's jump right in. First, you're gonna need a board, right? Like this. When you go buy them at the hardware store, they're called common board. It's just pine. It's really cheap. Um, they're called one bys. See how thin they are? So you can, this one's a one by eight, I think, and this is a one by six. And for the long boards like this, they're one by sixes. And then you just, you can have them cut it at the hardware store or you can cut it at home. I just use my chop saw and chopped a bunch up. So that's how that works. You can use just a plain board if you want to, but the ones that I did, you can see here, the people are stained wood, right? And in the other version, the people are painted, but the background is stained wood. So for either version, this one or this one, you have to stain your board first. And the reason is that you can't stain over paint. So, you have to start with a stained board, no matter which version you're going to do. Luckily, I put stained some boards. So, this one is stained a gray, which I love. And then the ones that I'm going to be working on today are stained brown. It's easy. You just get stained and wipe it on. Like, you can totally wipe it on with a paper towel or whatever you have laying around or rags or whatever. Just wipe it on wipe it off, let it dry. Once your board is stained and ready or while it's still drying, you can go ahead and move on to your stencil. Now I have a silhouette machine that I cut the stencil on, so you're gonna need some sort of cutting machine to do that. So I've already pre-cut our stencils. When you cut your stencil, it'll come off like this. This is actually not vinyl, it's contact paper. When I use my cutting machine to make stencils. I like to cut it out of contact paper because it's super inexpensive. So you got your vinyl, you've got it cut, it looks like this. Now you have to make a decision. I guess a better way to think about it is what do you want to be painted? Like on this one, the background is painted. On this one, the people are painted. Okay, so think in your mind, what do you want to be painted? Whatever you want to be painted, that's what you take off of your stencil. I'm gonna show you, don't worry. So this is the stencil, it's all cut, you can't really see it. But on this one, I want to paint the background, okay? So I'm gonna take the tool, this is a straight pen, and I am going to take off what I want to paint. So I wanna paint the background, so I'm just taking off the background like this. You want to go slow so that you don't take off other pieces. But see how it's leaving behind the people? What I want painted, I'm pulling off. But as you can see, there's still fill-in parts, like the letters have places that need pulled out, that sort of thing. 
So you have to pull them out. So on this design, the people will be stained, the background will be painted. Now if you want the other design, say you want to paint your people, which most people at my craft club picked the painted people version, you're going to pull out what you want painted, right? So here's this design and I've already started it. So you can see the shepherd and the sheep have been pulled out, right? So I'm onto the manger. You're just gonna lift it up and pull those pieces out, right? Pull out what you want to paint. So there's that. So after you have your design, whether you've pulled out the background or whether you've pulled out the people, okay? Either way, you're going to move your design onto your board. Now, when I first started doing stencils, I tried to do it piece by piece. And that's really hard to get it lined up straight. So there's this magic stuff called transfer tape, okay? Comes in a roll, comes in sheets. You're gonna want it. You can use it over and over. In fact, this piece that I'm going to be using here has been used probably four times. Um, I actually like using it more than once, especially for the wood. The stencil doesn't love to stick to the stain or the wood, I think because it has an oil base to it. And so if your, your transfer tape's a little less sticky, it'll pull up easier than um, a fresh one. Anyways, so you're gonna take your design. This is sticky on one side, paper on the other. You're gonna stick it down to your design and rub it on as best you can. Then you can take the back off of the contact paper and it will leave behind your stencil. And now our design is stuck to our transfer tape. Okay, I'm actually gonna do this on a raw board. You're simply going to lay your design down where you'd like it to go. And again, rub it into place. Peel to the side to leave your design on the board. Now remember, this is a stencil, so this isn't, it's very similar to how you would do a vinyl project, but we're painting instead of using vinyl today. Right? So a lot of problems that people have with painting on stencils is that it, the paint kind of bleeds under, you don't get super crisp lines. So the trick is, let me get this back over here. Ba -ba -da! Mod Podge, okay? Um, and Mod Podge is going to seal it. The idea is the Mod Podge is clear and it might run under your stencil, but it'll be okay because it's clear under the stencil. And then it kind of seals that crack with clear and then you can paint over it and get a crisp line. So you're just going to get these really fancy sponges. Yeah, five cents I think are these and go over your design. Now you don't want it to be super thick. First off, it'll take a while to dry if it's super thick. And second off, um, when you peel off your stencil, it, if it's super thick, it might like sit on top of your stencil and wanna come with it. So let me show you an example. I have Mod Podge where it says bright, which is probably backwards to you, and the camel. So the camel, it's probably too thick. You don't want it on this thick. But where it says bright, you can kind of see the shine. It's good. See how it doesn't really look white? That's what you're going for. It has a stencil on it. There, now you can see it. Um, but back here, it looks like the color of wood. But it's on there and I've Mod Podged over it and it's dry. So I'm going to go ahead and paint. So again, on this one, you can see I peeled out the background. So this one I'm going to paint the background on. Since it's already been Mod Podged, I'm just gonna take, this is off-white, and I'm gonna go over my board. I like it to look kind of distressed and not a solid color. So I'm not going to paint super carefully. 
You can see how I like, I missed spots and I globbed it on and that's okay. That's what I'm going for. So I painted white. Now you have your nativity board. You can go make a bunch, give them for gifts, put them on your shelf, whatever you would like to do with your board. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sugar Bee Crafts YouTube channel. Lots of crafty ideas every week.